Hello and welcome to my second video on Visual Basic Programming. Today well, I will be giving you a tour of the Visual Studio interface. I'll be making sure that by the end of this video, you will be more at home with this Visual Studio IDE. This video does not require you to do anything except pay attention, so relax and sip some coffee. When you open up Visual Studio, you will always be greeted up with Visual Studio Start Page. This is the Visual Studio Start Page. As you can see, on your left you have quick options to new project, open project, and also your recent projects right here. And also you can get announcements like uh, the new Visual Studio 2015 final release coming out soon. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is the options. I'm going to show you two specific options that I find important. First of all go to environment and then click general. In here the main thing I liked here is the color theme. You can make it to dark or blue or light. I usually make it dark during the night time so that it doesn't hurt my eyes as much. I'm going to leave it light for now. Another thing is uh, go to text editor, all languages and then general to change your line number. You can add line numbers or word wrap. I like the line numbers because when I have a lot of lines of code, it's very easy to find out how many lines you have. So if you change any settings, go ahead and click OK. The next thing is creating a new project. Now, in order to create a new project, you can either click right here on your start screen, right here on where it says start, or you can go to file and click on new project from here. I'm going to show you from here now the first thing you want to make sure is that it's you're selecting Visual Basic and then Windows not Visual C Sharp or any other language that you have installed next thing is you want to figure out what kind of application you want to make for example console Windows Forms, WPF I am going to show you an example of Windows Forms so when I created that example I used this right here because this one is the Windows Form the next thing you need to fi find out is what you want to name your project, the wh where you want to save it, and also the solution name. Now let me explain how Visual Studio saves your work. So this is how it works. First is your solution. Inside your solution is multiple projects. Inside a project is your full things, files like uh, your form, your uh, coding files and things like that. Next you have a bunch of folders and stuff and the two most important folders that I'm going to talk about is the bin folder which contains your fully compiled program as an exe or an executable file and the second one is the resources folder. The resources folder contains pictures and files that are embedded inside your program. Alright so once you have selected all this and named it properly this is the project name, this is the solution name once you've named all that, then you have created your first project. Now I have here an example Windows Forms application open here. First of all, notice that you have your blank form here which you can design and your properties window over here which doesn't have anything selected right now. But now it does, there we go. Sometimes that can happen, just switch to another tab and come back. First thing I want to show you is the Solution Explorer. When you open up an sol a solution, you have so many different projects, forms, and code files that you need a way to access those things quickly. So that's what the Solution Explorer is for. Solution Explorer, Explorer should be on your right. And this is what it looks like. If you had multiple forms or projects, they would all appear here in order, and you can collapse them like this for uh, organization. Now, first of all, notice that inside your solution is your project, and inside your project you have your form right here with your code right here. That's the code. I just popped up. And this is your form. Next, you also have a project settings right here, which I'll go to in a second. But first, I'm going to talk about some of the other panels. The next one I want to talk about is the properties panel, which I talked about in my last video. As you can see, you can change stuff from here, simple properties and things like that. But another thing you could do with this 
is you can go to events and you can do you can find all the events that you can do that are associated with this in this case the form so for example there's a load event which means the form load event visual basic is a event driven language which means that things happen when an event is triggered for example when i open up the form the form is going to load and so it's going to call on the form load function which is right here form load Next, I'm going to talk about the coding view. To get into the coding view of a form, go ahead and click View and Code. This is the designer form. This is the designing area. To get into coding, press View Code, or you, what you can do is use the shortcut, which I usually do. You can double click on, let's say, a button or anything, and it'll automatically create the default uh, event that is associated with this. For example, this is the load. So if I take it, it'll take me immediately to the form load. So this is form load. If I had a button, let's say I had a button, if I drag and drop a button here, let's put that in. If I double click that, it'll take me to the button click. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of this button as well, since I'm not going to use it. Now in here, you can see that it's essentially a text editor, but it is extremely powerful. You can it automatically highlights keywords such as public and class because those things are have special significance in Visual Basic. And also notice that when you select private sub here, it also highlights the end sub, which means that this these two are kind of connected. Private sub starts the sub, let's call it, and it ends right here. The code editor also includes predictive text called IntelliSense. It is extremely helpful, however it can sometimes get in your way. So let me show you how it works. First of all, if I wanted to press this, this is all the things that you can do to the form itself. As you can see, here are all the different things, all in a list for you. So if I start typing, I can select, it'll automatically select stuff for you. I'll go to background image or something like that. As you can see, it goes there. What if you want to read something that's underneath this? Then there's a cool trick I learned. You hold down your control key and then it turns invisible. And that's really cool. The next thing I'd like to show you is these two combo boxes at the top right here. These are your kind of identifiers for what these things are right here. For example, this is the form load. Now this thing tells you the object. For example, let me put the button back in so that you'll be able to see. So if there's the button right there, you'll see here's your object. First of all, you have the form, and then you have the button as well. And in here, you have all the different events that you can cause. For example, if I want a form uh, to do a lost focus, then it'll automatically create one, or if it's already created, it'll take you there. And this is really cool because navigating is very easy using this. Now let's say you edit your code. So let's uh, let me just edit this code for you quickly. Let's make the back color equal to a blue. All right, so it's blue now. So now, what if you want to save your work? How do you save your work? Well, that's very simple. Up here at the corner, right here, you have a new project, open file, and two save buttons. You can also save from file, and then save, and all this stuff right here. But let me explain what the difference is between these two. The one floppy right here is saving only the file that's open right now. In this case, it'll only save the form code but not your designer. Let's say you added some stuff to your designer, then it won't save that file. However, if you want to save everything together, you press this right here. This is save all. And the keyboard shortcuts are listed here as well. This is control S, and this is control shift S. So, once you have saved your project, you can be sure that you won't get into any trouble of losing data. So make sure you save often. Another cool feature in the text editor is the find and replace panel or window. This 
is it. It is extremely powerful, and you can search up stuff like uh, back color, let's say, and it'll highlight it on the form. You can search up stuff quickly by going to, let's say, you highlight text, and then you can press Control F, and you come up with this, and it'll automatically select text for you. You can also search within a selected area, for example, like this, and you can select here selection, and I'll search it up only in here. The Find and Replace dialog is also very good at replacing things, which is why it's called the Find and Replace dialog. Simply click this triangle right here, and you get this. This is the replace area. This is the finding area. So let's say we want to change text to uh, something like, or let's change the 100 in opacity. Oh, well, we select 100. As you can see, this place is in. It's already been selected because that's what we want. Then let's type in 50 instead. So if we type this in. You click replace or replace all. Replace next means it will replace the next occurrence of 100. But let's say you have many, many 100s and you want to select and you want to get rid of all of them at once. Then you just click this one which says replace all. Another cool thing is that you can set these things like matching the case which makes the case sensitive. Or you can match the entire word. For example, let's say you want to do uh, text but there's also a property called text color that's like this but you don't want to type all that in or, or actually if, let's say there's text color as well somewhere in here so let me put that in actually so let's say there's text color by the way this is all fake code this does not exist right now and so if you search in text you'll also get this so what you want to do is match the entire word and only text will be there and matching case means that if you had text like this, both of them are selected right now. Oops. Actually capitalize it automatically. That's not going to work right now. But let's say you have a, let me type in text here. That'll work. There we go. So if it says text right here as well, you, do on, you only want the capitalized one, then Make sure to make it case sensitive by typing it there and then make it case sensitive, clicking there, and only this will be activated now. The next thing I'm going to show you is bookmarking. Bookmarking stuff can be found right here. And this is really cool because you can bookmark areas where you add in a bookmark and you see right here there's a bookmark been added. And you can go through each bookmark by pressing these buttons. Also, delete the bookmark by pressing this. Now, the thing, the cool thing about this is that you can find areas of significance in your code very easily using the bookmarks, especially if you have lots of code involved. One more thing is the quick launch. The quick launch is something I, I found out relatively, well, actually, I just found out yesterday or something. You can search up commands by searching inside the quick launch bar. For example, let's say you want a bookmark. Search up bookmark here, and guess what? You'll find all your commands right here. You can edit a bookmark, you can, or you can toggle a bookmark, enable bookmarks, you can do all this stuff. You can also do anything like, uh, let's say you want to save. Save all or something. You just find it right here and you click. Now this is, unfortunately I found out about this, rather late so I can I haven't used it much at all but this is extremely useful and is very quick which is good for your programming another very important window is the error list window you can find all the different errors or warnings that you have on your program You'll, you can find it right here or you can find it in the view somewhere in here you have output and error list right here and there is the error list. And I have two error lists right here, or errors in here. And let me explain what types of errors you can get. There are three types of errors which you can which can occur in programming. One is a syntax error, an error in which your code is spelled wrong, or maybe it simply doesn't exist. For example, ASDF right here is not a VB code. 
So this is an error, which is why it shows up in the error list right here. ASDF is not declared. Another is a logical error, where let's say you wanted to type in 2 plus 2, but instead you typed in 2 minus 2. So you get the wrong result, but it's not a syntax error. A runtime error occurs when something like a text, you want to read a text file that's supposed to be on a computer, but it's not there. So there's nothing wrong with your code, and there's nothing wrong with your logic, but there's something wrong while the program is running. A file does not exist. That would be a runtime error. Now I'm going to talk about the project properties, which I skipped earlier. To access your project properties, you can go to Solution Explorer, and then click on My Project from here, or you can click on Project, then go to Windows Forms Example Properties. Or in your case, it would say Your Project Name, and then Properties. If you click on it, you'll arrive on this screen. I'm not going to go through all of these settings, since many of them require you to already have some previous programming knowledge, so I'm only going to talk about the main ones that I can explain. So starting with the target framework. The target framework is essentially the .NET framework version you want your uh, program to run using. So you need to pick wisely, because if you want to reach a, reach a larger audience, you probably want to go with something that's smaller. However, if you want some some uh, newer computers, you probably want to go with something around 4.5 to 4. The reason with this is that older computers will come pre-installed with the, their latest version, which was probably something around 3 or 3.5. And if the user doesn't update their computer, then they won't have that version, the latest versions of the .NET framework. So to be sure that you want to reach even older uh, people, you want to make sure that you want to pick something that they'll have as well. At least they have a higher chance of having. But if you want to reach people like uh, Windows 8 users or even Windows 10 users now, you can you should select something higher up, like around 4.5. The latest ones I would not use because most computers won't have them. So I'd recommend staying a couple versions back. So I would usually recommend you to do 4.5. The next setting is the startup form, which is basically the form that will start up when your program starts up. And you can find all your forms right here in the Solution Explorer. So you have Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, whatever. And this would all appear right here, Form 1, Form 2, and you can select whichever one you want to start up. And over here, icon is pretty self-explanatory. You browse for an icon, that's going to be an icon for your program. Over here, you have assembly information. I'm not going to go too much into this, but it's essentially your information about this product. So you have title, description, company, product, blah, 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 all this, and I'm not going to go too much into it. The next part I'm going to skip because it requires programming knowledge. So I'm going to skip compile, debug, and references, and go straight to resources. The resources area shows you what is in your resources folder that I talked about. The resources folder is saved inside your project. So this stuff can be displayed all around here. And you can save stuff like icons, and also different stuff like uh, strings, images, audio, files, and other things. I'm going to skip services and go straight to settings. The settings is basically your things that you can store inside your application, but dynamically, which means that you can actually change the information here. Unlike the resources that you can't change because they're embedded inside your program, you can actually change this. For example, let's say you want to uh, create a setting on your application for form color, for the background color of your form. You can um, ask the user for it and actually save it right on the settings right here without having to save a file with the setting. So you can have it right here on your application and you can call it back later so you can use it again which is really cool this is all I'm going to go through since the rest of them require programming knowledge so well, I'm going to exit out of here and back to our form alright so that's it for this video on the mini tour of the Visual Studio interface 
In this video, we learned about the start page, the options window, creating new projects, and also the Visual Basic file hierarchy, which includes the solution. Inside is the project and project files included inside that. And with a deeper exploration into Windows Forms, we learn about the Designer View, Solution Explorer, Properties Windows, Events, the Coding View, and awesome powerful code editing tools that you can use, including the Finder in Place bookmarks and also your code errors. Saving files is extremely important and we learned that about the two different types of saves that you can do. And we also learned that the properties window for each project is extremely useful and complex and that you need to be very careful in choosing your options there. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you, hope you join me next time in my Visual Basic tutorial. I'll be talking about uh, actual programming in the next video. So if you like this video, subscribe and like and see you next time.